surgery. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. The retina is located in the back of your eye. When we see, light enters the eye. It is focused onto the retina, which acts like the film in a camera, feeding information to the optic nerve, allowing you to see. As you get older, the vitreal fluid, which is the gel in your eye, can contract, pulling the retina away from the eye. This contraction can cause a small tear in the retina, allowing the fluid to seep behind the retina, detaching it from the back of the eye. This can cause loss of vision. A retinal detachment is a very serious ailment that must be dealt with as soon as possible after discovery. Symptoms that you may experience with a detached retina include seeing floaters or frequent flashes of light, shadows appearing in your peripheral or side vision, a gray curtain moving across your field of vision, or a sudden decrease in your vision. Again, if you experience any of these symptoms, contact your eye doctor immediately. Today, we're going to perform a retinal reattachment called a pneumatic retinopesky. The surgery takes about an hour and can be done on an outpatient basis. Our patient today is a 30-year-old man who recently noticed flashes in his vision. His ophthalmologist dilated the eye and detected a retinal tear and a detachment. He recommended immediate surgery to limit additional loss of vision. Let's begin. First, we need to administer a relaxing sedative intravenously. This will make our patient drowsy, but not put him to sleep. Can you place the needle for me? Just prior to surgery, additional drops of anesthetic are applied. We'll use a device called a speculum to hold the eye open wide during the procedure. Place the speculum for me, please. Now that the patient is anesthetized, we insert a syringe into the eye. Now we inject an air bubble into the vitreal fluid. As the bubble expands, it pushes the retina back against the wall of the eye. With the retina back in place, we can now seal the tear using a freezing probe. The probe is touched to the outside of the eye where the tear is. This freezes the tear back in place. It may take several touches depending on the size of the tear. The needle insertion will heal quickly. Can you remove the speculum? Our patient needs someone to drive him home after the surgery, and he shouldn't drive until he regains sight in the eye. We'll prescribe medicated eye drops to use several times each day for a few weeks after the surgery, and he'll need to wear a protective eye shield while sleeping or napping for about a week after surgery. A special pair of post-op sunglasses also need to be worn to protect his eye from sunlight and other bright light as his eye recovers. However, the biggest part of the recovery is head positioning. The bubble floats to the top of the eye, so the head must be positioned to keep the bubble against the detached portion of the eye. This means the patient must keep his head facing down, or the position indicated by his surgeon, for at least a week. Sight returns slowly to the eye over several months as the bubble must dissolve and be replaced by vitriol fluid. However, once the bubble dissolves, vision is usually restored to close to the previous level. You did a great job today, surgeon. While you're here, try one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com.